Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's the first Friday of the month, which means it's time for Plant Fueled with Dr. Nikki Davis, and she's going to be making a warm your up soup, which we need at least where I live right now because it's been raining every day. Please welcome Dr. Davis back to the show. You wear the best t-shirts, you know? <laughs> Well, I've got to, you know, stay up with your amazing hats that you're always wearing. So I feel like I've always got to have a new vegan shirt on at some point. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You could one day you did that fun episode where you showed a lot of your your favorite products. Maybe you can do like your favorite, like we just go in your closet. There you go. Perfect. I love it. And that's I also, cool. of course, buy stuff for my son. So he's got a bunch of these things. But it's so frustrating because he'll wear some of these, uh, you know, vegan shirts at school and kids are not very happy with him wearing things like that. They get offended by it. So I don't know. That's so <laughs> weird. So is he literally the only vegan in his school? No, there are others actually, um, which is exciting. You know, every so often he'll say, oh, did you know so-and-so is vegan? No, I had no idea. So there are definitely others. That's great. Yeah. What is, well, how much, how much plant-based is there where you live in general? I would say um, the vegan community in general, uh, as far as people who are more, you know, plant exclusive, like whole food plant eaters, um, I I don't know, but I'm starting to figure that out because I've started a local potluck, um, and and the first one we did was last month, and it it was packed. So there are other people like me out there looking to join up with other plant eaters. Um, so I think that there's a bigger community that I'm aware of. That is fantastic. Yeah. And by the way, you you might hear or see my little dog running around. Her name's Charlie. She's right here right now. We love her. I saw some pictures that you posted of her. She's precious. I know. Isn't she cute? Okay. She's just going to say hi real quick. This is my little sweetie. There she is. God, she's so adorable. Look at that coloring. Isn't that funny? That little like, V on her chest. I, I love it. Um, she's <laughs> almost like a, like a Superman cape. I don't know if you can see my earrings that my friend made, but these are Bailey. Maybe you could get. Oh, some, um, those are cute. I think I saw that you posted a picture of that. So, so she, she's a, a, a vegan jewelry artist and she mostly makes fruits and vegetables. But if you send her a picture of your pet, she'll oh, do some jewelry of your pet. Horrible. And I'm wearing my uh, grapefruit earrings today. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so we're going to be making, uh, what I call uh, warm you up soup because yes, it's also cold here. And it's supposed to snow tomorrow, so I think it's going to be getting even colder here. But this is a really simple recipe. In fact, it's based on a recipe that my mom found online. Um, and of course, I made my own little tweaks to it. Uh, but it's really not only kind of warming, but I feel like it would be a good soup for people who are under the weather and just not feeling great. Um, it's got lots of good nutrition in it. And uh, everything, I just throw everything in it in the Instant Pot. So... I think the original recipe was not an instant pot recipe at all. Um, but I don't know. I, I like things to be very simple and easy. Um, and by the way, I'm going to be, um, so I've made this soup earlier this week and I put some in the fridge and a freezer. So I love doing that so that I'll have soup for days after I make it. Um, so you'll be able to see the finished product because I've got some that I've made earlier. So we're going to throw everything in the instant pot. We won't have time to actually see the final product, um, but you'll get to see it, the, the version of it that I made earlier this week. Um, and it, and AJ, just so that you know, I may have to leave a little bit early today. Just no so worries. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll hold down the fort. Okay. I think we're, I'm going to take my kiddo to some hot springs, you know, because it's cold. So we got to go get warmed up. So, um, so right now I'm just peeling some carrots. Um, the recipe is going to be in the show notes. And, um, so one of the, the first thing I'll put in there are just the carrots. And so you're just going to peel three large carrots and then chop them up. And I know I'm slow with kind of chopping and peeling, but, uh, when I, when I cook, when I prepare food, it's kind of like a, you know, it's a way to be present and be mindful. So I, I really enjoy it. I don't Didn't know if you say that in, in your high school, they compared you to a sloth, <laughs> which is one of yeah. my favorite animals, especially baby sloths. 
they're so cute. I mean, what what is wrong with the sloth? You know. Oh, sloths. Oh, did you see that um, that movie? It was, was it Zootopia where all the sloths worked at the DMV? Yes. It was oh, hilarious. Oh, was so great. And Devika would like to know where you got your T-shirt. Oh, so it was a gift. Um, I want to say, I think she got it on Amazon, but it was a gift when I was just starting out residency. They, We had this uh, kind of getting to know you get together. And everybody, of course, knew that I was vegan or plant-based. So my gift was this. Um, so yeah, so I didn't buy it, but you know, you know, people give you gifts when they find out something unique about you. So I get a lot of vegan plant-based gifts. You're, you're, you're in Utah, right? I am. Yeah. Salt Lake city. Cause we have a viewer named Johnny Utah watching Johnny. Are you in Utah? Oh, that's funny. Um, well, isn't that a character from a, a movie? I don't know. Johnny Utah, I think it's, uh, oh, what is that movie called? It's like a surfing movie. Maybe somebody will know. Hmm. A surfing movie. Well, who was in it? Uh, Keanu Reeves. That's right. I, I, um, he was the was, one that was it breaking, breaking waves or, or, yeah. or yes. something like that? Something like that. Oh, point, point Break? Point Break. Maybe that was it. Yeah. I think that might have been it. All right. So three large carrots, and then we're going to also do uh, three stalks of celery that we'll chop up as well and throw those in there. You know, I have to say that whenever I find a good soup recipe, I never make it the way that is recommended. I always just throw everything in the Instant Pot and it always comes out. Because I can't be bothered to do anything besides just throw a bunch of things in a pot and let it cook. I know, I, I, I don't like to do things the old fashioned way anymore. Yeah. <laughs> which, which Instant Pot do you have? It's the large one. I don't remember how many quarts it is, but it's it's the bigger one. Um, yeah, so it can hold a lot. So I usually make, I usually fill it up to the max just so I can get the most out of it and then just freeze what I don't, what I don't eat that day. So that I, you know, that's the one thing I really try to do is just make sure that when I'm making food, I make lots of it. And then I have a good way of storing it so that I can always have good food to grab very easily. I like using those. You've seen those super cubes. I like using those for the freezer to put my soup in. Yep. Tammy Kramer uses those. I just use a Ziploc bag, maybe, uh, maybe because it lays flat. It's a little easier for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then kale um, is, so we've got our three large carrots, our three stalks of celery, and then I'm going to add two cups of kale. This is probably a little bit more than two cups, but that's all right. And you can use uh, another grain if, if you don't have kale. Um, spinach would work great too. And actually, if you use spinach, something that wilts really easily and quickly, you can always leave it out of the Instant Pot. And then once everything's cooked, it, it's so hot that you can throw that in there and it'll wilt. It doesn't need to be necessarily in there while it's cooking. Okay, so then we've got our two cups of kale in there. Uh, we're going to do two cans of chickpeas. I've already drained um, and rinsed these. So I'm just going to throw those straight in. Something about chickpeas with uh, carrots and greens that I just love that flavor, that mix of ingredients. Beans and greens, baby. There you go, beans and greens. That's what I always tell my patients with diabetes. Like what foods help with diabetes control? And it's beans and greens. It's good for anybody, though. 
Okay, um, and then we're gonna do mushrooms. So one and a half cups of white mushrooms, but honestly, you know, whatever mushrooms you've got will work. And these are already sliced and I've already washed them, but I'm just gonna chop them up just a little bit so that they're not so huge. How's everything at Love Life Telehealth? It's actually going really well. We just had a, a meeting this morning and we've got lots of fun things happening. We've got, we're helping out with a, a retreat that uh, Nelson Campbell is gonna be putting on. Uh, so one of our doctors, uh, Dr. Bozone, is gonna be doing that one uh, in North Carolina. So that will be a lot of fun. Um, we're working with the, we're going to start working with this uh, fasting mimicking program called, well, it's Prolon, but El Nutra. So we're helping out with their patients. Um, so yeah, so it's been, it's been fun. Lots of new, new things. And of course we joined up with the Mastering Diabetes folks. So it's been a lot of fun. All right. So I've added my mushrooms. Uh, let's see, onion. So hopefully Hopefully this onion cut, cutting goes well. You don't see me cry too much. You never know. So it's one, um, one yellow onion. We'll just chop up. How are you partnering with Mastering Diabetes? So, okay, so you know that our company was plant-based telehealth, and then it got acquired by a company called Love Life. So now we're Love Life Telehealth. Well, that company uh, acquired Mastering Diabetes as well. So now we're all under kind of the same big company. How many docs are there there now? Oh boy, I always forget. Um, I want to say that there are, gosh, 11, maybe even 12 at this point. So you have all the states covered now? We do. We have all the states covered. Yeah, we. Um, one of our doctors stepped away from patient care. Um, so we were without all the states for a few weeks there, but... Um, now we've got them all back again. And we brought on a new doctor, Carrie Graff. I'm sure you're going to I with her. know her. I'm going to be seeing her this summer. We're doing an event together that we're going to announce at the 1.30 show at the Finger Lakes. Oh, how fun. Yeah. Fun. So you're going to be going to that? I am. It'll be my first big foray since 2019, since before the pandemic. Yeah. Well, that's um, exciting. Very. I've never been to the Finger Lakes. Me neither. All right. So there's our onion. When you, wear, when you wear that shirt out, do people ask what it means? Plant-based? No. Yeah. Not anymore. No. Um, I mean, I remember a time when, you know, being vegetarian was really weird. Now it's like no big deal at all. Um, but being vegan, people are like, wait a minute, what? You don't even eat dairy or eggs. That's crazy. Um, so I feel like now it's become more accepted. Um, I, I'm sure you've seen the same thing because you've been doing this so long that you've seen this transition from where nobody really knows anything about what vegan means to now it's becoming more and more mainstream. I'd want mine to say plant exclusive. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So we've added our, so now we've got our kale, chickpeas, onion, mushrooms, carrots, celery. Uh, so now I'm going to add in the garlic. Uh, so it's, it's quite a bit of garlic, five teaspoons of garlic. And I just buy the minced little jar of minced. Um, just makes it easy. Okay. 
All right, it's easy. All right, and then we are going to do a teaspoon of lemon juice. And I actually have just a lemon um, that I used earlier this week when I made this, and I'm just gonna kind of squeeze some in there, about that amount, about a teaspoon. All right, and then we're gonna add in um, our two spices. I'm using curry powder and uh, red crushed red pepper. And each of those are gonna be a half a teaspoon. Is it a spicy soup? Uh, it is a little bit. It's got a little bit of a kick to it, yeah. Which I like. What you doing for Super Bowl? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen a Super Bowl or been to a Super Bowl party in my life. Wow. I know. I'm, it's crazy, huh? I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I know people like it, but I just, eh. yeah. Yeah, I like, I like baseball, so I'm not a big football fan. Um, I think, you know, sometimes it's fun to watch the commercials, but yeah, I, I just, I don't really enjoy watching football. All right, so now um, that we've added our garlic and our red pepper and our curry powder, um, now it's just adding the veggie broth. So what I do, so it's eight cups of veggie broth. Um, the flavor of the soup is so good that I think it probably also has to do with the bouillon paste that, that I use. Um, so you could use any veggie broth, but I don't know how, you know, how good it will be compared to what I make, which is delicious. Um, but the one that I use is the Better Than Bouillon Seasoned Vegetable Base Organic Reduced Sodium. Um, so since we're going to be doing eight cups of that, it's basically I'm just going to add eight cups of water to the Instant Pot. And then um, it's a, one teaspoon per cup um, of the bouillon. There's a question about the fasting mimicking thing you were oh. talking about. And uh, let's see where it went. I saw it a minute ago in the chat. Um, where did it go? Ah, uh, yes, here it is from TS. The Prolon Fasting Mimicking Program. Do you recommend the program and can you discuss the sodium amounts in the soup? It seems to be high. So um, I actually do think that the, you know, I, I worked over, I was an intern over at the Tree Mark Health Center. Uh, and so I'm very familiar with water only fasting. Um, and the Prolon or El Nutra um, people have come up with a way to mimic a basically a very low calorie or almost like a water only fast by having people consume just very low calorie foods for five days. And it kind of still puts you into nearly the same um, type of fasting state. Um, there is good data behind it. So they've done studies and have shown improvement in, uh, you know, especially what we're going to be working with them on is diabetes um, helping people get better blood sugar control, uh, be able to reduce medications. Uh, I don't know about the sodium content. I do know that the that they have uh, an endocrinologist who has come up with the program and is very specific what is with what is included in it, so that it is something that works well um, to mimic a fast. Um, but I don't know specifically why there are certain amounts of sodium in it or not. Um, but yeah, the, the one that we're specifically going to be helping them with is called El Nutra and it's uh, a diabetes program that you do for a year. So you do these five day fast, um, this five day fast mimicking thing, um, every month for some time. And then every other month you do lab work and you get doctor's visits and things like that. So, um, a lot of people with a lot of good success. So I'm excited to see how people do. You know, this is something that we just started working with them on. It's Is it expensive? Um, honestly, I don't know what the cost is. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you. 
but I'm, I'm guessing it's less expensive than insulin. Wow. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to add in my, so I put in my eight cups of water. I'm just going to add in my um, bouillon paste. And then we'll get that going. Want to answer the questions that came in while you're cooking? Are you able to do two things? Oh, at yeah, one? go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me find them. I sent them to you, but I will find them again. Of course, we cannot memorize these. Here we go. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Dr. Davis, here we go. Uh, here we go. This is from, nobody wants to tell you their name anymore, but here you go. Is Dulcalax or a Senna product tea safe to take past five days for intestinal slow motility? I'm positive for methane dominant SIBO. Any suggestions for anything else to take and for any tests to figure out slow motility root cause? Okay, um, so, you know, Senna or Dulcalax are laxatives, um, and they're really meant to be more of a temporary medication. Um, sorry, let me just tell you real quick. We're going to do uh, just the pressure cook setting on high pressure for 10 minutes. Boom, just like that. Okay, um, so I wouldn't continue those medications beyond about a week, uh, unless your doctor is prescribing you to take it for longer than that. So make sure that you're working with your doctor. I assume you have a GI doctor that you're working with, but I would definitely recommend that. Um, there are definitely many different causes of slow motility. So, um, that's not something that I could, you know, help you figure out. Um, but working with your doctor to come up with what the root cause might be. If you've already been diagnosed with SIBO, you know, that in and of itself can cause slow motility. So I think you probably just need a, a workup to try to figure out what, what the cause is. And then just be careful not to take medication longer than it says um, it is recommended unless your doctor approves it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. See, everybody seems to have SIBO these days. I know. Well. Okay, here's one about, I, oh, it's too bad Dr. Krant was yesterday's uh, doctor dermatologist, but maybe you know, her seven-year-old granddaughter developed white grayish eyelashes on her right eye, maybe poliosis per Dr. Google. Is there any home lab test that could be done prior to going to the doctor? Because my son has crappy health insurance. <laughs> Um, okay. So, uh, poliosis is, um, basically when you have a lack of melanin, um, going to certain hair. So hair on your head, you've probably seen those people that have like a white patch in one spot on the back of their head. Um, but it can affect your eyebrows and your eyelashes as well. Um, it is usually associated with, um, vitiligo, which is also, um, lack of melanin, but it's in your skin. So you've seen people also probably with those white patches, um, on their skin. Um, I wouldn't say that there's necessarily any kind of testing that you would do beforehand. Um, I think going to see someone in person so they can take a look and see, is that actually what it is? Um, poliosis and vitiligo are often associated with autoimmune and sometimes autoimmune thyroid uh, disorders. So that's usually something that um, doctors will want to test for if you've been diagnosed with, um, with that. So um, yeah, I just go see somebody in person to see what they would recommend. Is it weird that she only has it on one eye? No, no, that's pretty. I mean, if that is, if it is poliosis, then yeah, that, that would be expected. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Shirley would like to know, is it true that those who are on a statin drug are not able to absorb vitamin D from the sunlight? So... No, um, I will say I've not seen anything that supports that. Although um, one of the very common side effects of taking a statin medication is myopathy or basically breakdown of muscle, which can cause muscle aches and pains. And there is some uh, 
data that supports that people have worse myopathy when their vitamin D levels are low. So um, making sure that your vitamin D levels are sufficient, making sure you're getting enough sunshine can actually help if you are taking a statin um, that you don't have as much of a side effect of that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm going to show you kind of the finished product because I've got to get going so that I can go um, pick up my son. But let me just show you what the soup ended up looking like. All right. Can you see that, AJ? I don't want to dump it out. <laughs> oh, it looks great. Yeah. yeah. So um, really delicious. You know, you've got, I mean, I love it because it's got chickpeas are one of my favorite beans um, or legumes. Uh, and then you've got the kale in there with the carrots, lots of garlic, lots of onions. Um, and then with the curry powder and the red pepper, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a really delicious, yummy soup. And Charlie's, Charlie's bugging me. She's like, what is that? I want some of that. <laughs> That's so good. Do you have time for one more question? And then oh, sure, let's do one more. Okay, thanks. Charlene wants to know, what causes nocturnal itching? I'm 71 years old. I follow a plant-based diet. I have no rash or anything, just itching on my face, mostly in trunk. I usually get up and take an antihistamine so that I can go back to sleep. The antihistamine helps, but I prefer not to take it. Yeah. Um, you know, my, far, my first thought would be uh, a lot of times itching is from dry skin. And certainly when we get older, we do tend to have drier skin. So just making sure that you're staying well hydrated, drinking enough water. And then in those places where you're noticing most of the itching, I would just make sure that you put on a good thick uh, moisturizer and see if that helps. Um, but if it doesn't, then I would say, go, go see somebody. They can take a look if there's something else that might be going on. Yeah. See a dermatologist. I wonder if it's a product she's using too sometimes, you know? Yeah, that could be. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, this was a fun recipe. Thank you so much. What? So you're going to Super Bowl, so you don't have any Super Bowl recipes you're going to make. Well, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes we'll watch the Super Bowl, and I'll make like a, you know, like a seven layer type dip with beans and salsa and avocado and things like that. So, and then I'll make up my own corn chips in the air fryer. So we'll do that sometimes. Sounds great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Doctor Davis. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in two hours at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time when you're going to meet Brad and Barbara. And we're going to talk to you about this exciting event in the Finger Lakes that I'm going to be appearing at. And 